This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Burnout is real, whether it's work, family, kids, or life in general. Here's your reminder to slow down and take care of yourself. Visit betterhelp.com super and learn to manage the burnout. Today's video will contain spoilers for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Hey brother, what is the deal with Doctor Strange's new third Eye. This was honestly probably the biggest question I had walking out of the theater from Multiverse of Madness. Because we see it pop up several times throughout the movie, but at no point are we given any explanation for what it means, what it does, where it came from. In fact, I dare say the exact opposite is true. Like we end up with just a lot of mixed messaging about the eye. When it opened up at the end of the movie, I thought maybe we were actually seeing something more akin to WandaVision, where it looks like the action's over, but maybe it's just getting started? But does this thing make you more powerful? Is it a curse? A blessing? Can he see out of the eye? Or is it like some other being looking out of the eye? And is it somehow related to the eye of Agamotto that he's wearing around his neck? Or is that just a complete coincidence? And let me just tell you what, you guys, if you haven't been reading comics for like the past 80 years or so, deep diving some of the characters can be really challenging. And I don't think this is more true for any other character than Doctor Strange. Like, remember the really early powers we were introduced to? Like, Captain America's really, really strong. What can he do? He's a really good leader, he's a good person, and he's strong. And, and, very durable. Would make a great phone case. Plus, he has a shield. Doctor Strange, on the other hand, whew, I mean, he is just always dealing with such mystic, demonic, magical, cosmic kind of problems. And he just has so many different artifacts that are all named after so many other possibly made up weird fictional characters. Like this is the kind of factual sentence you run into all the time reading Doctor Strange. When Shialmar the Shadow Queen attacked Clea, niece of Dormammu, Lord of the Dark Dimension, with enchanted stone golems, Doctor Strange summoned the hand of Hogoth to defeat the golem and rescue Clea. Mm -hmm. Okay, but does it come with a screen protector, huh? Yes or no? What I'm trying to say is I don't know if Doctor Strange would make a phone case. It's really not obvious. But also, I just really hope you enjoyed this video because I spent a lot of time learning a lot of fictional things about other fictional things. But either way, today we get to the bottom, or I guess the top, of Doctor Strange's third eye. Guys, before we dive on into today's video, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, HelloTushy.com. All right, imagine this, you guys. You're walking down the street when all of a sudden a bird poops all over your arm. What are you gonna do? Pat it dry with a dry napkin? Uh, no, you're not. You're gonna wash it off with water. So why are we treating our rears any differently? Stop smearing your business around with toilet paper and start washing with water with the Hello Tushy bidet. Guys, I've got a Hello Tushy bidet at home and here at the office. And let me just tell you, I did not know what clean meant before I got one of these devices. Because with a simple spray and pat dry, the Hello Tushy bidet will wash your rear way cleaner than a simple bit of toilet paper will. Plus, it installs in just eight minutes and cuts down on your toilet paper usage by 80%. And our viewers can get 10% off and free shipping when they go to hellotoshi.com slash super. Once again, that's hellotoshi.com slash super for 10% off your order and free shipping. Link is in the description down below. Okay, the third eye. First, let's just go over what we saw and learned about it in the movie. Because it first appears not on our Doctor Strange, but instead on Sinister Strange. As his name suggests, Sinister Strange is a much darker version of Doctor Strange who was unable to cope with the fact that he did not end up with Christine Palmer. He explains to our Doctor Strange that he was so distraught by this that he began using the Darkhold, the Book of the Dam, to start dreamwalking into other versions of himself. Dreamwalking into them and then killing any version that found a way to be happy despite not ending up with Christine. If I can't be happy without Christine, neither can you. It's really kind of a strange thing to be upset about. But upon finishing this story, he states the Darkhold takes a heavy toll and then reveals the third eye. Which I don't know about you, but for me, this led me to the idea that third eye equals bad. Especially since immediately after that, the two Stranges engage in the most musically creative battle I've ever seen, which our Strange eventually wins thanks to harp magic. 
classic. Go music. But following the fight, our Doctor Strange then uses the Darkhold himself to do something which seems to like violate even the already evil rules of the Darkhold to dreamwalk into a dead body version of himself. Like when the evil book of the damned is like, yeah, you can't do that you know you've crossed the line. That said, the book provides just the merest of obstacles for Zombie Strange to overcome by sending literal demons to attack him, which he overcomes pretty immediately and then turns into wings, as you do. But as a viewer, it looked like the Darkhold tried to exact a toll, but failed, so our Doctor Strange just got to walk away free. But then we cut to the post credit scene where the third eye appears on Doctor Strange's forehead and he begins howling in pain and it looks like, oh wow, maybe the Darkhold actually is taking a toll. But then, like two minutes later, we see some purple clad sorceress played by Charlize Theron show up and be like, yo, we need you to help save the Dark Dimension, can you come? Doctor Strange immediately agrees, pops open the third eye as if he's just like, this is part of my pre-ritual for battle, let's go! And at that point, it looks like he's totally adept at using the third eye and even sees it as a good thing. So it's like, good, bad? Uh, so, a couple things we need to address here. First, who was the purple clad sorceress? This character is known as Clea. She is the Sorcerer Supreme in the Dark Dimension and is typically a love interest for Doctor Strange in the comics. The Dark Dimension, by the way, is where Dormammu, the world's worst negotiator, lives who tried to take over the Earth in Doctor Strange 1. And indeed, this is where Clea opens a portal to at the end of Doctor Strange 2. It seemed like American Shop has this ability to like open portals to other dimensions. It's pretty unique, so the fact that some other character with a magical knife can just rip open things in reality is you know, whatever. Also, also, I'll point out, in case there's any doubt about who this character is supposed to be being played by Charlize Theron, she also posted to Twitter a picture of her in the purple makeup with the following caption, say hello to Clea. But Clea is also a pretty interesting character as it relates to Dormammu. In fact, if you were paying close attention to my earlier nonsense sentence, you may have already picked up on this. Clea, niece of Dormammu, lord of the dark dimension. Yes, Clea is Dormammu's niece. Her father is the prince of the dark dimension, and her mother was what was known as a Faltine, who are <clears throat> extra dimensional energy beings born from pure magic. Seriously, you guys, researching Doctor Strange is like, so hard. Anyway, Clea's mom is the one who's related to Dormammu, who looks pretty much like he's gonna be back whenever we see Doctor Strange again, which is a pretty big deal because if you will recall, the first time they met, and the second, and third, and like fourth, fifth, fifteenth time, he killed Doctor Strange. In the end, Doctor Strange only ends up winning the battle because of the Time Stone, which of course no longer exists, which you have to think puts Dormammu in a much better bargaining position. But that brings us back to Doctor Strange's new third eye, which I think is going to be his new most powerful weapon. Because while Doctor Strange might not have the Time Stone in the Eye of Agamotto anymore, he might have something even better. The actual Eye of Agamotto. Probably worth noting that in the comics, the Eye of Agamotto is not typically the container of the Time Stone. It's just its own artifact with an entire myriad of powers. And thus far, it looks like the same must be true in the MCU because for one thing, despite the Time Stone not being in here anymore, Doctor Strange is continuing to wear it. In fact, we even see him try and use it in Multiverse of Madness, although it has to be said it is not very impressive. It happens when they're trying to access the gap space between universes and gain access to the Book of Vishanti. Doctor Strange activates the eye to try and undo the lock. But ultimately it doesn't work. The actual way to open the door is to press a broken watch into the handle. <laughs> Duh. Not gonna lie, this exact move was just like so, so, so much cooler in National Treasure. Where is the National Treasure cinematic universe, you guys? I mean, we all want it. The NTCU? More Nick Cage? 108 years of searching and I'm three feet away. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. My point is, this obviously does other things. In the comics, it can produce an all-seeing light and reveal truths. It also gives the user perceptions into another soul, and whenever the user is using it, a third eye appears on their forehead. Now, to be fair, in the MCU, the third eye is obviously appearing under different circumstances, but I still think it is the true eye of Agamotto. So, that being said, 
who is Agamotto. Well, I hope you're ready for some more Doctor Strange Mr. Babble, which is not to be confused with Techno Babble. Agamotto was actually Earth's first Sorcerer Supreme and is one of three members of a super powerful mystic group known as the, wait for it, Vishanti. Vishanti as in the Book of Vishanti that Doctor Strange and American Chavez spent most of the movie looking for and which ultimately got destroyed. Which I'm not gonna lie, when that happened in the movie, I was pretty happy because its powers were described to give whatever sorcerer reads it the power they need to defeat any enemy. I mean, it was a literal book of deus ex machina that seemed like it could literally solve any problem any hero had ever going forward. Which would be like, Super boring. Anyway, along with Agamotto, the other two Vishanti are known as Oshter and Hogoth. Why does that sound familiar? Doctor Strange summoned the hand of Hogoth to defeat the golem and rescue Clea. I see that, it's all coming together. Weirdly, Agamotto himself is actually born from a tear of Oshter after she saw the happiness of three children playing, which is just adorable. It's not really relevant, but it is adorable. But with the Book of Vishanti destroyed and the Time Stone no longer in play, it would be my guess that the next best thing to have on your side when going back up against Dormammu is the presence of one of the Vishanti themselves. And in this case, that would be accomplished or represented by Doctor Strange's new third eye. Also, if it's anything like its comics counterpart, it might also be really useful in revealing a lot of hidden truths for upcoming Marvel productions. For example, there is a series called Secret Invasion coming out in the future, which will involve a faction of Skrulls who have been infiltrating Earth for years. So it'd be good if someone could like see who those were. Not to mention there's also like variants and deviants and eternals and symbiotes and technological face masks and other forms of magical illusion and just overall shape-shifting powers. And there's a lot of ways to be hiding in plain sight in the MCU right now. But on top of that, the other thing possibly pointing to the third eye being of the Vishanti is the possible presence of another member of Vishanti who's been lurking in the shadows, Hogoth. Hear me out. One of the things I really love about the character of Hogoth is that, and it's kind of hard to tell when you first look at him, but he's a giant tiger. I know it's not easy to recognize right away, but I swear if you keep looking, you'll see it about giant tiger. And do you know what's been sitting unresolved in my brain for the past year? all of the random tiger inclusions in WandaVision. As ever with WandaVision, just so much of it went unexplained, but the tigers everywhere. There's a tiger on this cake. There are tigers on the arms of this chair. Even Agnes refers to herself as a tiger. There's no taming this tiger. Which to be fair, maybe this was all just like Agnes was the tiger hiding in plain sight. But Wanda herself is also a huge part of Multiverse of Madness and hugely powerful in the same way that Hogoth probably was. So maybe it's also just a sneaky indication that Hogoth was watching over her during WandaVision. Either way, the point is Doctor Strange is new third eye is almost definitely the true eye of Agamotto and represents a huge level up in his power, which is saying something because he's already pretty powerful. But again, he is probably going to need that power boost if he's going to take on Dormammu again, because if you recall the first time, the first time he really wasn't much of a match. Dormammu! 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 <laughs> And actually on that note, one final prediction here, he'll obviously be fighting alongside Clea, who I should mention is the one who eventually succeeds him as the Sorcerer Supreme. So my long way, way out there distant future prediction is that that eventually happens again. And whenever we find out who the next real big bad of the MCU is going to be, that the Avengers victory will come at the cost of Doctor Strange's life in a very, I am Iron Man kind of way. Also guys, quick reminder, if you are in the Orlando area, Ben and I will be there this Friday, May 19th, as part of the Very Normal Podcast Tour. We will be there with the annual Pass Podcast, and Ben and I will be hosting a live version of J vs. Ben, where you, the audience, will get to play along. We are really looking forward to it. Tickets are still available. Link is in the description down below. Hope to see you there. But guys, if you have any more questions about Multiverse of Madness, be sure to let us know in the towel section down below. If you want to see some more unanswered questions from Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, Ben, until next time, I will see you in the lap.